Hey and welcome back. Finally, after all this talking from me, we're going to look at Scikit-Learn. So let me just give a few words before we look at their homepage. So Scikit-Learn is an abbreviation for Science Kit Learning or Science Kit Learn, I think. Here you can see the logo of Scikit-Learn and Scikit-Learn is a Python library for dealing with machine learning models. So there is nothing wrong in writing machine learning models from scratch. It's just that this takes quite a lot of time. So scikit-learn helps us with this, with having essentially more or less pre-made models that we can then use. This does not mean that we don't have to do any work. So again, it's used for machine learning in Python. I think it started around 2010 and now it's an incredibly well-established library in Python. Here you can see the webpage, it's scikit-learn.org and then you can go to stable and index.html and here you can find essentially the main page. And what we will do after looking at the webpage is to import some machine learning models. So you can see a code example of what we'll do. We'll of course go over to some Jupyter notebooks and do it there, but it's very common to reach into the scikit-learn library, for instance, into the linear model sub package here and import linear regression. A linear regression is then a machine learning model that we can train on data and use it to solve supervised regression problems. So here you can see the scikit-learn webpage. I just want to do, essentially get you comfortable with looking at the webpage and navigating a bit here before we actually go in and start to code. So it says, yes, yeah, scikit-learn machine learning in Python. And here are some buzzwords. It's simple and efficient tool for predictive data analysis. It's accessible to everybody and reusable in various contexts. It is built on NumPy and SciPy and Matplotlib. So these are some familiar friends that we have. And this is great because it essentially allows us to use our knowledge of NumPy in scikit-learn. And very importantly, scikit-learn is open source and it's commercially usable. What you can do if you're onto scikit-learn's page is that you can go to the get started here to get some easy information that is rather digestible. If you want to start with some additional material to the course, I think this is great to take a look at. But let me just go back to where we were on the homepage. You can see here that the most recent stable version is 1.1 and you can see some highlights. Here you can see the project on GitHub, but also here when you scroll a bit down, here you have some of the major features that scikit-learn provides. It provides classification, essentially machine learning algorithms for solving classification problems. It provides machine learning models for regression problems. You can also see here some algorithms. This is support vector regression, nearest neighbors, random forests, and so on. And here you can also see some applications. Well, in classification, you have spam detection or image recognition. Essentially the example we talked about with handwritten digits, this is an image recognition problem. But you have more than classification and regression, you have clustering, you have dimensionality reduction, you have something called model selection, and you have some pre-processing features. We'll look at all of these during the course, so don't worry. But if you're wondering about a specific topic or just want to explore something, you can see here that scikit-learn's webpage is just amazing. So if you're wondering about, hey, what is really this PCA thing, then you can just go here to PCA. Here you can get a short overview of what PCA is. And then you can scroll a bit down to get some variants. And if you scroll probably even further down, you got some code examples, you got some thematics here that you can read. And there is just a lot of really, really useful information. And I just honestly love the webpage. So don't be afraid to go look around at the web page. There is so much useful information here. You are, of course, watching a course on scikit-learn. So me and Stina will, of course, try to tell you as much as we can about this. So that's it for the web page. Let's head into our Jupyter Notebooks to get started. So here's the Jupyter Notebook that we'll work with for this second module. Here is some information about what we'll go through and here are some functions and attributes that we will end up using. You can find this Jupyter Notebook cheat attached if we want to follow along. So what we'll do essentially is to first just import scikit-learn and look at some models. We won't really train them or test them. We'll just look at them in a sense and try to understand how they works. And in the next video, we'll look at some specific data, namely the diabetes data set and essentially explore this. So the goal of this module is that you know how to import stuff from scikit-learn, know to check out models and so on, and also that you have learned some things about exploring data sets. In the next module, Stina will tell you about a specific machine learning model called linear regression. So let's get started. What you can do is to import a whole scikit-learn package. This is one possibility. Then you just go import sklearn. You would do with any Python library. You run the cell that works hopefully fine for you as well. What's a lot more in common in scikit-learn is to reach into specific sub packages and import specific models. So what you can do is to use the from keyword and then go into sklearn dot, let's do first linear model and then import something from here. Here you can, for instance, import the linear regression model. So if I run this, you can also see that this works. As you've probably noticed, the library is called scikit-learn, but the actual name you're importing is just sklearn. 
So here we go into the linear model sub package and import linear regression. We can also do another one. So we can go into, let's say, sklearn.tree and import decision. And what you can do is to pass typically tab here to get some options. Here we have decision tree classifier or decision tree regressor. Let's just do decision tree classifier and run this. So essentially both of these are supervised models. This is a regression model surprise, surprise, by the name regression. And the decision tree classifier is, of course, a classifier, as you can see here. So this is how you import models in scikit-learn. And really, the only thing I want to look at here is to look at the help page. So let's use the help function to look at linear regression and run this. And here you can see you get loads of information. Helps you understand the class linear regression in the module scikit-learn.linearmodel.base. So the first thing you notice is that linear regression is just a Python class. That's nice to know. But also you can find some basic information here. So it says that linear regression does ordinarily squares linear regression. It also tells you that the linear regression fits a linear model with some coefficients to minimize the residual sum of squares between the observed targets in the data set and the targets predicted by linear approximation. And if you're like most people, this isn't really that understandable unless you already know what you're talking about. If you're in camp, I already know linear regression, then this makes sense. If you're in camp, I don't know linear regression, then this probably don't make that much sense. The reason is simply that it's hard to summarize what linear regression is all about with like two lines of text. Then I will really explain to you linear regression in the next module. But what you can see here that's really useful is the parameters that you can pass in, like fit intercept, normalize, copy, and jobs, and so on. So you have that. And you can also see after you create an object, essentially what the attributes are. So you can do coef, rank, singular, and so on. What's great about the documentation of scikit-learn is that they often also provide examples. So you can see almost full code examples where you start by importing numpy as np, going to scikit linear model and getting this linear regression and then doing stuff with it. So a great way to kind of understand how these things work is to also just to look at the examples and see if you understand this. Again, for you at this point in time, you probably don't because we haven't explained linear regression yet, but I just want to again tell you how these help pages work. And this continues with more information and more information. And it's most of this, if you know the basics of what the linear regression is, then this is really, really useful. We can also do the same with the other module. So this is the decision tree, decision tree classifier. And here you can also see the same. You can also see that this is a Python class. This gives you an idea that these machine learning models are really just when it comes down to the Python implementation, they're really just classes. They're really just a Python object that you probably have seen at one point before. So in a sense, they're no more scary than a list or a tuple or a dictionary or something like this. And here again, you can see some information you can see some parameters that it takes. Let's scroll down a bit and you can see some notes and you can also see examples. And what you also notice here is that the documentation is quite uniform. So in most of these models, you'll find examples, you'll find parameters, attributes, essentially most of what you need to know to work with them. So that's it. In the next video, we'll talk a bit about data exploration with this diabetes data set. I'm really excited about showing you this diabetes data set. So I'll see you soon.